That was just awful. Let's talk about it all today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, May 15th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From brake lights to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Welcome in, everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. Hopefully, you are having a fantastic week. Happy halfway point through the week. Uh, I'm stalling because I really don't want to talk about this baseball game. Tigers lose one to nothing in the 10th inning to the Miami Marlins, who sport the worst record in baseball. At home, by the way. The Tigers were at home. You're one and one in the series. You're now 21 and 21 somehow, some way on the young season. It's not really that young anymore. This was an absolutely ridiculous and embarrassing loss. Um, what went wrong? <laughs> it's almost even funny to say out loud. Let's talk about the offense. I, I think the stat, and it was thrown out there by, by a couple of people, I believe the Tigers have given Reese Olsen six runs of run support this season. Ryan Weathers has a career ERA of 5.38. It was over four and a half, around four and a half on the season going into this game. Um, he only had four strikeouts. He only had five whiffs. He had five swings and misses. And, and, and the wildest stat, this dude went eight innings of shutout ball against a major league lineup. His CSW percentage, which some people like, some people don't take it for with, you know, context is obviously important. Called strikes plus whiffs percentage. Okay. Just the amount of pitches he threw. That were either called strikes or swinging miss strikes, just non foul ball strikes. 19%. For those who are unaware, that is really low, especially for a guy that went eight shutout. Bro was just throwing the ball in the zone all night, and there was nothing this lineup could do. Absolutely nothing. They were swinging early in counts. They were, they were attacking early. They were relatively aggressive. Didn't matter. Plenty of fastballs over the heart of the plate. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The ball was even hit decently hard. The Tigers hit the, like, you know, exit velocity, all that kind of, you know, numbers like that. They hit the ball pretty hard. Pop outs and ground outs. A lot of ground outs. I know Weathers has some tail uh, on his pitches, and like that's the type of pitcher he is, but that is pretty unbelievable. Actually, I I, I take that back. That, that's me being overly dramatic. This feels super believable. Did anyone watch this and go, oh my goodness, I'm shocked? Doesn't make it any less frustrating or disappointing. They reach new depths. But I don't think any, I don't think anyone walked away from from this ball game on TV and went, "Wow, well that was out of character." 
I, I mean, we can go down the list. This offense is is absolutely brutal. Matt Veerling's OPS on the season, back under 700. Mark Canna, back under 800. He was never going to be an above 800 hitter, uh, 800 OPS hitter on the season. But he's cooled off from the really hot start. Riley Green has been sliding very hard over the last week. Spencer Torgelson, 0 for in this game, late on fastballs early in the game, early on fastballs late on the game. Absolutely wild stuff. Pop-up city yet again. Pop-up, pop-up, pop-up. Javi Baez has a 419 OPS. 419 OPS. That's the worst hitter in baseball, just so we're clear. And if you're going by just qualified hitters, the next closest is like 70 or 80. It's like pushing 100 OPS points higher. There's only one other qualified hitter that's sub 500, and he's like 493 or something like that. 419 OPS. The top three in your lineup tonight, was was Matt Vierling leadoff, Andy Abanez two, Mark Canna three. If you were told in February that in a May game, in the middle of May, this lineup's top three hitters were going to be Matt Vierling, Andy Abanez, and Mark Canna, would you be pumped? Would you be like, oh yeah, that's this thing working? You got perfect gamed through five innings. You got shut out through, well, you got shut out throughout the whole game. You did not score a run. And that's with the Manfred runner in the 10th. The pitching staff, I tweeted this out, this whole spiel I'm on right now. The pitching staff did not give up an earned run in this ballgame. You lost in 10 and didn't score a single run. The home team in an extra innings game did not score a single run. The Marlins are playing you super tough. The Miami Marlins. Worst record in baseball started selling two weeks ago. Traded Luisa Rise in May. Those Miami Marlins don't have two healthy pitchers to rub together. Those Miami Marlins are playing you tough. You're a hanging slider in game one away from being down 0-2 to the worst team in baseball that has a worse record than the Chicago White Sox. What the heck are we doing? There, There is just no way you can look at what this team has done the last two weeks and just be like, well, let's just sit tight. And we talked about it on Friday. there's not a hero walking through that door. There's not somebody in the minors that you can call on and just go, you know what, bring up so-and-so. That's just going to make this offense competent overnight. But my goodness. Yesterday we kept saying, thank goodness, right? That was because we probably shouldn't have won that game. Like I said, hanging slider in the eighth or an error in the second, whichever you want to look at it. Only thing preventing you from from being down 0-2 to the worst team in baseball. Okay, let's keep the ball rolling, as we say here. Um... 
Got a lot more to talk about. Going to talk about what went right as well. Shut out through nine. His pitching was fantastic in this ball game. We'll talk about that. We'll talk a little bit more, you know, big picture stuff, kind of outlook of the team and whatnot in our stuff section at the end. And then we'll preview game three for a hot minute. All right. We'll do all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships and also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for, and with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP, and bring home that huge win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. I appreciate you all greatly for tuning in. As always, making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to that everydayers that do tune in. Every day, we will be back tomorrow recapping the series finale against the Miami Marlins. Also, be sure to check out Locked On Sports today, the free 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or for free in the Amazon Fire TV channels app from all of our great hosts here at Locked On, giving you just round the clock, that's the word, news coverage of all the biggest stories in sports. So be sure to check that out today. Okay. So obviously we spent all of segment one talking about the putrid offense. We'll talk a little bit more about it in segment three, again, in stuff. Uh, let's talk about what went right in this game. What went right was very obviously the pitching and was even more obviously Reese Olsen. This was maybe the best outing of Reese Olsen's entire career. It's certainly up there if it's not number one. Eight innings, three hits, no runs, no walks, and six strikeouts. Again, one of the best starts of his career. His pitch mix was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable uh, through a very similar amount of fastballs, changeups, and sliders. Was uh, attacking all of the corners really, really well. Really solid command. And again, just a fantastic fantastic pitch mix and sequencing. I give Jake Rogers a lot of credit on that as well. Just really uh, an unbelievable performance and, and the movement on his pitches. This isn't a new comment or, or observation, but it is truly remarkable. And I think we're all pretty well aware of that. The one thing that I always give him uh, probably even more than I should kind of a hard time for is the inability to get or the lack of swings and misses on his fastball. But you know, in this game, pretty much everything was either a strikeout or a ground ball, right? I mean, he only had only, quote-unquote, had six strikeouts. That's You know, he didn't strike out 15 or anything like that. But he was still able to get his swings and misses a lot of driving the ball into the ground and a lot of getting under the baseball as well. Quite a few flyouts, at least early in the game especially. Um, like this was really the epitome of what he's been doing most of the season, especially his last four or five starts. Like it, the, the fastball that I, I had given him, you know, some criticism for, uh, in this game, the way he utilized it was perfect because it was consistently getting ball in play out. And I think that that is absolutely wonderful. It's incredibly smart. And it's something that he can absolutely use to his advantage to have in the back pocket. You know what? I can get a swing and miss almost anytime I want to with my changeup or slider, or if I want to be a little bit more efficient, right? Maybe I, I, or I need a ground ball in this situation. I can attack the bottom of the zone with this fastball or with this sinker and, and I can get that right. Or he can attack the fastball up in the zone and get people to get under it a little bit, which he got in this outing quite a few flyouts, like, just the way he was attacking hitters, I, I was beyond impressed. Like I, I, I would love to do, I don't know, like a, 
like a live stream or, or just like some way to really like verbalize all of the thoughts that I have throughout a resource and start because there, there are so many. Every single pitch has has an intent and it, 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 he just blows me away. He is wildly impressive. His ERA is down to like 214. There's a stat put out there by Stats Perform on Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. It says Reese Olsen is the only MLB pitcher to have a sub 225 ERA, but an 0 4 or worse record over his first eight starts of a season since ERA became an official stat in 1913. That is absolutely embarrassing and remarkable. And, you know, if it was a one off thing where you were like, or even a twice off thing, you know what I mean? If it was like, oh, like, you know, just it happens sometimes you know oh baseball right like he's been pitching really well sometimes the offense just doesn't show up I think when it happens every single time a specific dude takes the mound it's just the offense isn't good right I think that's probably it I think the offense just might not be very good and that's probably why they never show up when he takes the mound because they don't show up very often really at all Users a ton of credit, though, if, if we're trying to stay positive here. <laughs> he deserves a ton of credit. He looked absolutely brilliant in this ball game. Jason Foley, I thought, looked pretty solid. One inning of perfect ball with one strikeout. Uh, he was 96, 97 miles an hour in this ball game. Um, he kind of just pitched to contacts, you know, uh, and he had the strikeout, obviously, but um, was really just filling the strike zone and walked out of there with a perfect inning. Good for him. Then Alex Lang, one inning, one hit, one run. It was unearned because the Manfred runner doesn't count as an earned run. No walks and one strikeout. Uh, he threw 11 pitches. Eight of them were curveballs. And the one changeup he threw was an absolutely terrible pitch. Uh, but he, you know, he didn't give up an earned run. Like I, I am, I am very, very rarely, if ever, going to be upset at a reliever for only giving up the Manfred runner, right? You give up two or three runs in an extra inning, obviously that's not great, and we'll have a conversation about that. But it is very difficult for me to get upset at a pitcher who can re- – you can record three straight outs and give up a run, right? Like, that's ridiculous. Uh, so I, I am going to find I, – I think that Alex Lang should be the extra innings – pitcher more times than not because he's the best swing and miss guy you have in your pen and the only way to really navigate and tightrope your way out of danger and extras is to get strikeouts so I think it makes sense to go to him consistently which they seem to be doing it makes sense to me I I I just I I'm not going to get too upset especially when you, you know it's the only run you give up and and you think oh well surely my offense will do the same thing and just score the Manfred runner it's so funny, like when that rule was first implemented, right? It was, oh, well, you need to score two in extras then, right? That was like what everybody said, myself included. Everybody's like, oh, well, you need to score two in extras, especially for the road team, because the home team's definitely scoring the one. And then, you know, like you need to give yourself that one run cushion because the, the runner on second is just a given. It's just a guarantee. Boy, do I have a team for you that really pushes the boundaries of that logic and really just that thought process and that strategy in general. I I have a team for you that may break rules of physics. So I didn't have any issue with the bullpen. I didn't have any issue with Reese Olsen. Obviously you'd have to be ridiculous to have any issues with him. This was a fantastically pitched ball game. Was there anything good about the offense in this game? Um, you know what? I actually thought that Winseal Perez's second to last at bat, his eighth inning at bat, I thought was really good. Thought it was really good. That's it. I think that's the end of my list. I think that's the only thing that I liked. That happened offensively the entire game. And that came with two outs in the eighth inning with nobody on base and the worst hitter in all of baseball hits behind him with a 419 OPS. So nothing came of it, obviously, because of the situation I just laid out. But if I had to say one nice thing, you know, say one nice thing about everything, if I had to say something nice, 
about the offense. It would just be that at bat. That was it. He worked the count really well. Uh, he really fouled off a lot of sliders, got one to hit, drove it to left field. Thought it was great. That's the extent of what I liked throughout every single at bat from every player on this team. Okay, let's talk stuff. We'll do that right after this. Can I talk to you all today about our friends over at Prize Picks? Baseball season is obviously in full swing. Even if the Tigers offense isn't aware of that, we're all aware of it. So don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries today. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entries today. Also get in on all the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a whole new level during basketball's postseason. Absolutely electric playoff basketball. Uh, you also have WNBA debuting on Tuesday night. Caitlin Clark making her WNBA debut. It is a very, very fun time to be a sports fan, and you can get in on all of the great action over at prize picks. So download the app today. Use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today. Use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in. Let's talk stuff. Uh, so I, I wanted to say the ejection in the first inning when I was still in a halfway decent mood was actually really funny to me. Um, and that's what, like, if it happened to the Tigers, I would have thought it was funny too. Like, it's just wild that that's happened twice. Like where, you know, the, the umpires are just, I, I, is that a power trip thing? I don't like, they're just looking to toss people, man. Like they're just absolutely. If I hear anything come from your dugout, I don't care who it is. Somebody's got to get tossed. I think that's such a, an absurd mindset, but I'm also not a major league umpire, I guess. Um, the, the extent of my umpiring career was, uh, was little league for sure i did some travel ball as well i guess but um yeah just like that's that's just wild that's really 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 a, a wild start to this ball game to happen was at the first or the second inning pretty early in this one uh Gio Urshela is back he goes oh for obviously like most people did in this ball game akil badu optioned no surprise there again they have a lot of outfielders on the roster if you count matt veerling as an outfielder, you have five on the roster. And and that's kind of transitions us into our last talking point here, which is like, what, what can you actually do here? Like, are you just kind of screwed? Like, was this just a, a really, really like poor off season where you did not get any better? You didn't really do a whole lot. And now you're like that this this is just going to be what it looks like. We talked about this last Friday. If you want like a super, you know, in-depth on kind of the, the call-up candidates, if you will, and roster moves that could potentially happen, we go way more in-depth on that episode last Friday. But like, you don't have a pool of players in your 40-man to call up and save the day. Like I said at the beginning of the show, there, there isn't a, a dude in a cape about to walk through that door. The only players that are even remotely hitting on your major league roster are, are outfielders. So like Justin Henry Malloy, he, he's not going to play third base. It's not going to happen. It seems he's back from injury. It seems like, thankfully. So like you could do that for, for who? Like you're not going to send out Winsiel Perez. He's one of the, he's batting like three, a lot of nights, <laughs> right? You're not going to send down any of your outfielders. Winsiel Perez, Riley Green, Kerry Carpenter, Mark Canna, Matt Beerling. You're not sending any of those dudes down. So you can call up Malloy, but it's going to be at the expense of who? Not Andy Abanez. Zach McKinstry. Okay, well, then Javi Baez is your shortstop every single day, no matter what. Not, I mean, Zach McKinstry's OPS, I'm pretty sure, starts with a five. So, like, not that that's too much better. Colt Keith, obviously, has been struggling. I think you, you keep him up. But if you're like, no, something has to happen, send him down. Okay. 
Matt Beardling's going to be playing a lot of infield then, but Gio Urshela's back. And then, like, the minor leaguers that are on the 40-man, uh, the, the minor league infielders, rather, that are on the 40-man are Eddie's Leonard, Ryan Cried, their buddy Kennedy. Two of those three are hurt. Okay, you, you want to, let's bring back Bunny Kennedy. Sure. He, he was pretty good when we called him up. Does that really change the opinion of your offense? Does that, are, are you viewing this offense substantially different because Buddy Kennedy is on the roster? No disrespect. He's got more talent in his left pinky toe, uh, uh, you know, on the baseball field than I've ever had in my entire life. He's playing at the highest level. But, like, does that change the, the opinion that you as a fan, as a consumer of this team, have on the offense? Buddy Kennedy getting called back up. Probably not, I would venture to say. Even if you called up Malloy and Buddy Kennedy and you sent down the whoever you think the two worst hitters are, we can make this subjective. Whoever you want. <laughs> Truly, whoever you want to send down. We can just do it that way. Doesn't even matter who it is. Two worst hitters, go. Does the offense look a lot different to you now? Nope. <laughs> sure doesn't. Which goes back to the point that I made about a week, week and a half ago. Which was, this offense is not doing anything unless the people you actually planned on doing well going into the season start doing well. And if they don't, then you are screwed. There's no amount of in-house major league and minor league moves that is going to save you if the core pieces that you actually expected to do well don't do well. And we got over 100 games left, and you're 500 somehow. I'm not, like, writing off, you know, the rest of the season, and, like, obviously I'm going to be here every day, right? I'm the last person that's ever going to tell you that, you know, like, the season's wraps, right? I, I'm here no matter what every day. But that is really the only solution. You're not going to make a trade in May to fix the offense. Not how it works. How much longer can Javi Baez actually be on this roster? That's a question I have for the class. 419 OPS. He's actually grading out as a negative defender so far this season too, which was like the only value he brought to the table the last two years. I think this decision may largely be like, do we have anyone that actually can fill the roster spot? <laughs> oh my goodness. Like you're going to pay him the money anyway. You might as well make it so that he's not actively costing the team games, right? Obviously tonight, this game in a vacuum is not a hobby specific issue. Obviously. Okay. If, if somehow that's what you have gotten out of this, I don't know what to tell you. This, this is very clearly a team wide thing, but the next closest qualified hitter in baseball to Javi at the bottom, who's in dead last, like I said, at the beginning of the show is almost a hundred points higher in OPS. He's like 80 points higher. It's dreadful. There is no way you can justify a season of this. This isn't a guy with a 600 OPS that's a big-time plus defender and gets hits with runners of scoring position. This is a guy who, if he finished out the year, would be one of the worst hitters over the course of a full season in the history of this sport and is also grading out negatively in pretty much every defensive metric so far this season. It would be inexcusable and undefendable, entirely undefendable, if he remains at this production, which we have no reason to believe will change, throughout the course of the entire season. What is the cutoff day? And what's the stat line? If he's got an OPS that starts with a six, he's not going anywhere. Let me just tell you all that right now. 
I promise you. 600 OPS or higher by like the end of May or whatever. He goes on a hot streak. <laughs> Hilarious notion. Uh, like, th- you know what I mean? Th- he's not going to go anywhere. If this dude's OPS starts with a four on June 1st, what are we doing? Hitting coaches we've already talked about in the past. I mean, I, we, we've talked we've talked about everyone. We've talked about everybody. What a train wreck. Um, meanwhile, the Tigers are still 21 and 21 and are still a 500 baseball team at the present moment. Um, they are going for a series win, which would still be, I, I guess, uh, fine. Would would still don't lose the series. <laughs> don't lose it. Um, but go win the series for the love of everything. Go win the series. Trevor Rogers is 0 and 6 with a 6.57 ERA and a whip on the year that is pushing two. If you get shut down by Trevor Rogers, there may not be any any coming back. There might not be a, a light at the end of the tunnel for the offense. That that might be wraps. Um, so please go do something. Go win a ball game. Casey Mize, one and one on the year, three five eight ERA. Looking for some swing and miss stuff out of him. Uh, looking for some strikeout stuff. I would say specifically the slider, even more specifically. Want to be moved by his slider. You know, everybody. The fastball looks better than it did pre TJ. Everybody talks about the splitter. Need you know we have the similar conversation to Bo Brisky. I need I need something that moves east to west. I need a, need a horizontal pitch. I haven't been too impressed with his slider this year. And want that to look good. And then obviously every start we're kind of eyeing his fastball as well okay i appreciate you all greatly thanks for making us your first listen every day shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day and we will be back tomorrow i appreciate you all for uh for rocking with me here and and for still tuning in despite the frustration we're all in this together right and 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 again I, i i have no doubt that the players and and the coaches and et cetera are all very frustrated by losses like this as well. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't really sign up for the notion that just like they don't care about what they do. Um, but uh, at some point, something has to give, whether it's a, a move or um, I, like I said, you, you, you can't just cross your fingers and hope that it gets better. But at the same time, no internal move is just going to turn this thing around and make it do a 180. It can improve it, but it, it, it's not just going to make this magically great overnight. Um, the, the players that, you know, Torgelson's obviously the, the big one, but like the players you actually went into the year and, and, and put responsibility on need to actually show up. That That's the only way that this ship gets righted. The only way. They play the games for a reason. We'll see if that happens. All right, just one game, just a very, very frustrating game. I try not to ride the roller coaster, and I try not to be, you know, heavy, you know, like it's so over, we're so back, guy. I, I really try. I, I, I promise, I do. I try very hard not to be that, and and kind of, I don't want to say keep a level head because I, I think I've, <laughs> not sure, that's a good way to describe me, but um, I, I try to not get too high with the highs or too low with the lows, but. 10 innings of no runs to to Ryan Weathers and the Marlins, I think will break even the best of us. All right. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers. Where is my outro video? What a disaster. I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>